Now, as we start part two, and of course, part one was the buildup to this, we're going to look at projectiles with quadratic functions. And basically, let me go to a whiteboard here for a moment. We're going to be on sometimes a platform where we're going to shoot an arrow up into the air or some kind of projectile, and it's going to come back down. And uh, this would be like the initial height off the ground that we shoot it. And often what they're looking for is the maximum. So in general, your A value is going to be negative because you're shooting it up. And they're wondering how long with T does it take to reach the ground, which is your zero level. Now, some other times, too, they like to ask, how long will it take to get this many feet above the ground? And then as it reaches its maximum and it starts dropping down, you're going to get two answers here. But again, this is the formula you're going to be using. And I'll take that off of there so it doesn't distract us too much. And we want to identify the letters that are used in the formula. So this is the height that you're going to reach eventually. And if it's ground level, it's going to be zero. And then T is time. And V sub O is the initial velocity that that projectile is shot into the air, whether it's an arrow or a little rocket. And then H sub O is the initial height if you were on a platform. OK, let's take a look now at the example one. We'll move it down. Or actually, it's example four here. OK, so here is the specifics. And this is the formula that we're going to start with here. So write a quadratic function that models the bullet's height. So this would be h equals a now, we said, is a negative 16. And then t squared. And uh, the muzzle velocity is going to be plus 320 t. And our initial height is going to be 0, because there is shooting this, in a sense, from the ground. So our questions, then, is the formula. So this is the formula for letter A here. Take a moment, copy that down. B. What, at what height will the bullet be in 10 seconds? So here we're going to substitute a negative 16, 10, square that, plus 320 times 10, and then plus 0, but we don't need to write that. And then when will it hit the ground? would be that we're going to write this, uh, negative 16t squared plus 320t equals 0. And you can see now we can solve that either by factoring or the quadratic formula. And then when will the bullet be 1,200 feet above the ground? So here it's going to be this same equation. This is for, that would be C here. And then D, it would be negative 16t squared plus 320t. Now, over here, this is going to equal 1,200. 
But to put it in standard form, I'm going to move it from this side back here. So negative 1,200. And then all of that equals 0. All right, so these are the things. Now, I could work these out, but we'll use what the book is offering. We wanted to see where they came from and then follow it along. So A, we set up. Now B, we substituted. And take a moment to copy this down. And I'll kind of help out here, too. So 10 squared is 100. So a negative 16 times 100. And then we're going to add, or in this case, this becomes a negative. We subtract that from 3,200, and we get 1,600 feet at 10 seconds. Now, in part C, when does the bullet hit the ground? Well, again, there's our equation we had earlier. And notice you could probably factor out, let me show you that, in a sense of review from an earlier lesson, we're going to divide each term by a negative 16. They're not showing that here. So this then becomes t squared minus 20t. Going to factor out the t. And we get t then equals 0, t equals 20. And what does that mean? Well, you're going to start at the ground. That's 0. And then by the time it goes up and comes down, then the other one is 20. OK, that was c. And then to go to the last one, when the height is, let me clear this up, 20, uh, 1,200, I should say. You're wondering. You put the 1,200 there, brought it over, became this. Now, again, this will also, you can divide everything by a negative 16, get this. And it factors nicely, raising that up a little bit. So as you draw the graph, it goes up, and then it reaches 12,000 at 5 seconds. That's your uh, seconds value. And then on the way down at 15. And then they're showing the work of solving that quadratic equation and getting your two values. So on the way up, on the way down. And I would sketch this graph as well. OK, this will be example four. Now, I'm surprised they didn't ask us for the maximum, which is the vertex up here, but maybe in future ones. OK, well, here they are asking. And fortunately, we have done all of this. We're just going to use the vertex when a is negative to find the maximum. Now, they're introducing another form. And I, at first, thought we wouldn't use this. But I'm going to at least introduce it to you. So again, part of vocabulary, include this in your notes. And this could be a quiz question as well. Now, what's the name of this formula? Well, this is sort of, if this y were 0, it would be the quadratic equation in standard form. Well, there's our y. There's our y. Now, there's a. a is here. But we don't have other letters that are here. Well, this form is called the vertex form. And write that down if I ask, what is the vertex form of the quadratic equation? And you might say, what does everything stand for? Well, this is our a term. That stays the same. Now, if a is negative, this a is negative, or as this a is negative, Again, these are parabolas because they're uh, quadratic. 
If it's negative, it's going to open up downward. If A is positive here, it's going to open up upward. Now, the H and the K actually are the ordered pair, H comma K. That is X comma Y of the vertex. Ooh. Now, the key, though, when you're reading it from this equation is whatever sign is by the H here, when you convert that into its ordered pair for the vertex, listen to this. This is the important part. The sign of this changes. So if we had something like this, X minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 4, and let's say this was 2, what would be the vertex from this form? And the answer would be, it would be a positive 3, but the K is your Y value, and that is, just as is listed there, would be 4. If this were a negative 4, that would be a negative 4. The only one where the sign changes is the letter H, okay? Because sometimes you'll see this. Uh, we won't have anything there. X plus 4 and then minus 3. Well, the vertex then in this form, and that, of course, is squared, would be a negative 4 and a negative 3. Okay, this is background. And uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to use it here, but uh, uh, giving it as background. Going on now to example six. It's a similar problem. Pause for a moment and then read this. So you're going to throw a ball with an initial velocity, which is your V sub O. And it's from the ground level, so we're saying that's going to be zero. So your equation would be this. And you're wondering, when will it reach its maximum? Well, to find its maximum using this formula, we just have to find the vertex, which is, once again, a negative b over 2a. Well, as we look at this, b is 64, so this would be a negative 64. Now, our a term is negative, so negative 16 times 2 is a negative 32. So our vertex is going to be 2. Now, to find up find out at what height would it reach. Now that we know our x value, we can put, or in this case, it's our t value, we substitute the t for 2. So that's what they're showing. 2 squared is 4, negative 64, and this is 128. Subtract that from it, we get our height then of 64. So up over here, the ordered pair, which is the vertex, is going to be 2. That's for the time. And then the height is 64. All right, so I think this one's sort of easy if you're familiar with the formula. And we've worked the vertex now a number of times. And then how to find the y-coordinate 2 by substituting your x value into the formula. All right, let's go on. Now, for example, 7, we did one like this before, but here we were looking for something a little different. Now we're looking for a vertex in this parabola. So pause for a moment and then see what you could find. Okay, now we say this side's going to be x, this side's going to be x, and this side is going to be 
240 minus the 2x here that we had before. And that's where they get this. Now, to figure out area, it's going to be x times this length, because we don't need this other side right now. And that would be 240 minus 2x. And let's follow the work, because we did, we did one like this. Now, once we do this and multiply it through, we get our values. And it's 240x minus 2x squared. But again, we're looking for the vertex. So let's write it again. Never hurts. Help, helps remember a negative b over 2a. Well, what is our b value? Our b value is 240, but we need a negative b, so a negative 240 divided by 2a. And what is our a? Our a is a negative 2. So this is going to be divided by 4, a negative 4, which then gives us a positive 60. And they're showing the work here. But again, this is our x value. And what we need to find out is our y value. And we find that by putting the 60 into this equation, this part of it, substitution, and we see it gives us the maximum of 7,200 square feet. So this would be 7,200 square feet. Now, if you were going to draw the parabola of this, again, it would, since A is negative, it's going to open downward. So our maximum is here. And what are the coordinates of that vertex? Well, it's this. And this is how we figured it out. So again, if you have one like this in your practice and certify, which I'm pretty sure you will, this is going to be useful. Now, as you work at home, one of the features of this is that you could use a graphing calculator to perhaps check your work. Here they're featuring a TI-84, and there's one of the functions is you can put this equation in there and then say, and they're showing you all the steps of it, and this is available, and then you graph it. Now, as a little review, let me ask a few questions about this, and this will wind us up. Uh, question number one, and include this in your notes, because we're referring to this graph. This point right here what do we call that? Well, we call that the vertex. Question two. Now, was our A value in that initial equation positive or negative? It was positive. It's opening upwards. Now, this one's obvious. Is our vertex, again, looking at this, the minimum or the maximum? It's the minimum. Now, it's hard to tell here a little bit. I'm going to take this point off of here so you can see it better. What is our axis of symmetry? Well, again, it's kind of hard to pick up, but I would say it's like x equals a negative 1. Probably right about there, I guess, 1. Hard to tell. Now, you can zoom and make the window bigger and pick out things. Okay, let's do another one here. We're just 
using up uh, some questions and finalizing this lesson for Chapter 5. Uh, what are the zeros? Find the zeros. Now remember, they're going to be ordered pairs. And we know our x value is a 0, and this one's a 0. And as we look at it, this one is 1, 2, 3, a negative 3, I believe. And this one is a positive 1. All right, 6. And again, I will ask these by their numbers. What is the y-intercept? I should just have one line there. The y hyphen intercept here. And here, our value for x will be 0. And we're going to have some y value here. So as I go, I count down 1, 2, 3, maybe. Again, it's hard to tell. We could use a tracing function to figure it out. But this is what I'm guesstimating this at. All right, well, this will wind up this lesson. You folks are getting ready for some sort of test now.